Welcome to the My Journey podcast, the place where I document my freelance journey. And with the help of my good friend, Tom Scott, we discuss a whole range of business related topics. We do this by randomizing subjects, interviewing incredible guests and answering your questions. But as ever, we're going to start this episode by catching up on what we've been up to since we were last around the mic together. So Tom, it's been a while since you, we've been around the mic together, but you've been back at work a little bit longer now. How How is that for you? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm back at work. Uh, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty much the best way to describe that. It's been busy. It's been so busy. I think I touched on this uh, a little bit before, but doing, uh, well, going into Tuesday, I'll be working. I'll be back full time, almost. I'll have my right. one college day because I have my exam coming up. But yeah, doing, doing two days work in a five day job while trying to catch up with everything that's happened over the past god knows how many months trying to just maintain the daily stuff and then learn everything new from our new job role yes yeah it's been interesting we'll say so how is it going transitioning to that the new role and getting everything sorted for that it's slower than i first expected it to be and it's changed slightly from how it first came about. I mean, right, it was okay. always a bit up in the air as to what was going to change, how things were going to happen. Um, but yeah, it should be, it's going to be one of the things, because I'm going to transition into doing a lot of stuff in accounts still that I didn't really touch before. Yeah. So it's learning all of that sort of stuff, which I know about it. I know that part of the business, but I haven't really fully understood it yet before. So trying to stay on top of all that, but things are looking promising with the, like, luckily like the two account managers that I'm working with from their side of the business are quite on top of all getting all their numbers in and nice. everything like that. So trying to deal with the financial side, once there's already all the learners sort of there is kind of easy. Make sure it's a bit easier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's just trying to get on top of that and yeah, get into it really. But We'll see, because I've got all that, and as I say, I've got my exam coming up in two or three weeks as well, so. I suppose with returning from Fairlow, entering a new role, which is kind of a bit of a, a new role for the business in itself as well, in terms of yeah. it's not really been defined what it is, and having your exams coming up, it must just be, like, from one extreme to another, from being... Oh, it, it really is. Yeah, I mean, I know most people's days is, like, the hardest part is often the getting out of bed and going, but... Honestly, going from, and it's not that I was like staying in bed the entire time I was on furlough, yeah. but you know, that extra half an hour, hour that you'd get and, or even when you wake up, you don't have that panic of, oh, wait, you know, when you wake up, oh, my alarm hasn't gone off. Like, yeah. where, where, where's my alarm? And then you look at your phone and it's actually three hours before your alarm was meant to go off. <laughs> you sat there panicking like, oh God. Um, so yeah, there's all yeah. that fun, fun stuff coming back, but yeah, it's been, it's been good. How have you been getting on? Yeah, it's been a busy couple of weeks, really. Um, we've started the new kind of strand of podcast content, which people might have heard, which is yep. we'll kind of touch upon a bit at the end. Um, but yeah, apart from that, been uh, I've kind of done really well. Like a few of the new clients that I'm talking to have come on to like um, I've got the new three tiered pricing structure, which I think I mentioned a mm -hmm. few we few weeks back, probably more like yeah. a couple of months ago. But um, a lot of them are coming on to the end one, which is the management package. So I'm just kind of planning at the moment how to promote the other two. Because um, although they're lower revenue for me, um, the reason they're lower revenue is they're lower, less time consuming. Um, yes. But, and I've got quite a good pipeline of work at the moment. So it'd be good just to slot a couple of them in for case studies going forward. So I'm just trying to plan how to how to promote that and, some of the stuff that will be coming out on my social media in the next couple of weeks is going to be geared a bit more to that, a um, bit mm -hmm. more like looking at big brands and seeing what they're doing and kind of talking, putting like real life plans together for companies so that other people can see the kind of work that I would do. Um, yeah. And then that'll tie into stepping up the YouTube game as well. Like started putting out the other episodes of the podcast on there and then started doing some YouTube only content, which I'm not putting anywhere else and just trying to build that up. And it all, hopefully, the idea is it'll all tie together. But yes. it's going to take a few weeks just while I'm testing things out, getting 
used to at all and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just last couple of weeks just been onboarding the new clients and trying to figure out how to up some more on in other areas. So yeah. It's good times oh, really. Yeah, no, it sounds positive. Yeah, definitely. And you know, it's um with the clients I'm onboarding as well, they're completely different to um any anybody else I've worked with before so it's quite nice to get stuck into a completely different uh field really because one of the clients is um in a construction industry which I've not really done much with before um another one is in um healthcare technology which is quite interesting and another one is within like um healthcare hygiene premises that kind of thing so completely yeah. different to the lawyers I normally work with so yeah it's, it's how much of a challenge does that bring you? Like, without giving away all your secrets for how you do everything you do, how much does it differ between each customer like that? So I quite like it differing. I would like, I think you can probably, longer term, I'd probably want to specialise a little bit more um, yeah. in which area I do. Um, one, from a streamlining point of view, two, from a branding, my branding point of view, and then three, from a... Um, pricing point of view if you're a specialist in a certain area and um, you can kind of up your prices a bit but at the moment I really enjoy working across different sectors because I've got a couple of clients in the legal industry now they're not competitors but you do kind of think about oh, I've put that out for them and then there's something similar you want to put out for the other client but you're always conscious of not replicating what you've done for the other client yeah. or vice versa um, so it can be really tough because you are trying to produce unique content for them all the time. And when they're in the same industry and the same stuff's happening within that industry and they're all talking about the same topics, you've got to be careful. Whereas if you've got somebody in arts and culture and then someone in the legal sector, the chances are their content isn't going to overlap too much. So it gives you lots yes. more scope. So I, I quite, at the, at the level I'm at at the moment, I like it because it allows me to just keep the creative juices flowing each week's yes. different um because i put i'm trying to aim to have like two to three clients per week in my head so i've talked about the spreadsheet that i used to plan my work mm -hmm. before the color coded bombshell thing um and essentially each client will be at a different stage each so it's not all, i'm not doing all my plans at the same time not doing all my analytics at the same time they're all yeah. staggered. But I hope to have like two or three clients each week going across each stage. Um, mm -hmm. And if you've got the same clients every week, you do just get a bit, I don't, you know, you feel like you're creating the same plan three or four times. So uh, it's good to spread them out a bit more and have something completely different. And it, it's just fun when the person in construction, when it got pitched to me, it was by another freelancer. And he said, this is going to sound really odd, but, and he told me a, a bit about the business. I was like, God, that sounds like it might be a struggle for content. You know, I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But then when you start talking to the, the guy who owns the business and this other freelancer that's involved with it, there's some really cool stuff we can do. And I've not, they've not fully gone across the line yet. So I don't want to say too much about what, yeah. who they are and what I'm doing with them. But it's something that like, you would think is really boring and actually there's loads we can there's loads of ideas we can do with it and hopefully yeah. it'll include a bit of personal branding as well which will be good fun for me so oh, yeah oh sorry then but yeah so it's just it's been busy busy couple of weeks but just yeah. uh onboarding and hopefully bring on a few more is there anything else you've been up to that's not work related anything uh, outside of work that you've been not enjoying work related Honestly, I've kept things to a pretty much minimum. Um, I don't know if it's been just been tired from st uh, work or whatnot. I've I've started back at the gym this week. Nice. That's uh, that 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 was an experience. Was it? Um, especially when you go in when you go a few times a week, especially with looking at the signing book as well, and on your same page of signing people, where it's like ten spaces, when you're the third time in the gym and you're probably the fifth on that list sort of thing you know when you know there's not many people going it's like oh okay this is um, that was quite good gym. actually especially yeah exactly and then when you're seeing 
just like the uppage in signs and hand sanitizer and all the stuff to wipe down the equipment, the gym being changed around to facilitate um, everything, like even like the air con being blocked off so you can't turn it on, like easy access to open windows, like, you know, when you see that sort of stuff going on, especially with everything COVID related, um, yeah, it's, it is nice to see and it's good to be back in the gym. I know we've mentioned, I couldn't even remember off the top of my head which episode it was, but in a previous episode where we've talked about like leaving work, going to the gym, unwinding from it all. I think it was the last definitely... episode. <laughs> it was in the last episode. Yeah, oh. work life balance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that that episode just seems so long ago, but it, it was does. Again, it two does. weeks away. It's mad. Um, that is one. That is one thing I'm not particularly liking about being back at work. Even when I was like, because this week had been pretty much full time, but before that, even having them few days where I wasn't working, just f- having your weekend, but then you have that time during the week where it's not weekend, but you're still not doing it. So it didn't feel like I was fully doing weekend sort of stuff, but I had more productivity behind me, like I would during the week so I could do little extra things, whereas if it was editing videos or whatever, and then, yeah, yeah it's kind of moved away from that bit. It's interesting because you say about that, and I've said about me working the Mondays, like trying to get my Mondays to do other stuff that's not weekend yeah. stuff, but it's not work stuff. And <laughs> I've had to have a big think when on board in these new clients about how that still plays a role. How that still plays a week Because yes. it, it's just taking on more work. And obviously during lockdown, I, I didn't have as much work. So it's like, how do I now balance when we're coming out the other side? And it's not as seen as like I, I don't think i should be judged by what other people think but in the way that if you only work a four day week compared to a five day week during normal times there's a bit of maybe judgment there but during lockdown it, no one judged anyone for anything yeah. and it's how i balance that especially with clients as well they they'll probably want access five days a week so how do I manage that if they email me on a monday and yes stuff like that especially now there's more clients i knew with my other clients that there's very little uh, urgent stuff comes through from them. So it was absolutely fine. That I didn't, I could pick it up on a Monday um, if needed, but I could guarantee there probably wasn't going to be too much. Whereas now getting on new, new clients, I don't know what they're going to be like. They might need some more urgent um, assistance in different areas. So it's just something to, to bear in mind really. But I know, I know like what you're saying, that kind of going from, nothing like no, complete work-life balance as we mentioned in the one which was complete life barely any work to the complete opposite where actually outside of work you don't want to be doing other stuff you just want to relax and recuperate ready for the next week so yeah interesting interesting times for for both of us really um oh, yeah. but yeah i think it's good to catch up to hear about where you're up to over the last couple of weeks but i think we should uh, jump into the main topic for today So once again, we're going to be randomly generating a topic from our long list for this week's main topic. So I've got the long list open and I'm just heading over to the random number generator provided by Google. And where random number is being yourself, self-confidence, finding who you are and how we change. It's quite an interesting one because we've done about presenting and pitching uh, quite recently which was kind of confidence related um but i think this is this is slightly different it sits somewhere between confidence and the presenting pitching side of things and personal branding which we've also touched upon it, it kind of sits somewhere in the middle i think so in terms of like let's just start with that kind of confidence discussion maybe for now would you say in a business environment, whether that's networking, presenting, uh, just in the office, you know, in any of them kind of environments, have you, are you confident in your own abilities and uh, yourself, really? I'm confident in my own abilities and myself if it's my decision to talk about or present something. Completely bit different ball game if I'm part of a conversation and a question then gets asked. Yes. 
um, it's one of them things. It's like if if you know it, you can talk about it. If you don't, you don't. But I I often struggle with that. Just the ability to straight up say no, I can't do that. I'm yeah. Not, the thing is, I'm more than happy if if anyone needs me to do anything and I can't do it. I'm more than happy to say I can't do it. I, I'm not. I'm not like. I don't have that ego there where it's like, oh yeah, I can, I can, I can do that. I'll, I'll figure that out sort of thing. If I can't do it, I can't do it. It's depending on who it is to kind of have that thing to turn around and go, oh, actually, I know you really need this right now, but I can't actually do that for you. Yeah. I think as well, like you said there about Q and A and on the spot moments, it's, um, mm-hmm. it's something I did a presentation recently for back at Eagle Labs, which was an online thing. And I love q and I love being part of it. I love like the rush of it. But it, it, it's I know that that's the part of the presentation that afterwards I, I will sit and go through over in my head about what did I say? Was that the right thing to say? Could I have said something better? And I remember after we came off the call, well, the, the webinar for the Eagle Labs thing, the lady said, oh, that's the most questions we've ever had. That was brilliant. And I remember thinking... I mean, it was good at the time, but I don't know how good it'll be afterwards. <laughs> and I remember I was sat there later on. I was, I'd, I'd been asked for an example of something, and I'd said a brand that I thought was the example that I wanted to use. And I was like, oh, I've th-. and then I just got it in my head afterwards. I'd said the wrong brand, and yeah. I was out and about, so I couldn't do anything about it. And I was like, I've, I've said the wrong brand. I've said the wrong brand. I've said the wrong brand. I've said the wrong. Went back. I'd said the wrong brand kind of but basically i'd said the subsidiary company and not the main company so they wouldn't have found the stuff i was talking about because it was by the main company and not the subsidiary so actually i was absolutely spot on but for the whole day i was like for the rest of that well a couple of hours i was like knocking myself going why did you say it if you didn't know it why did you say it but i did know it i had got i had got it right and i think very linked to what we did about presenting and pitching we we've said it before like actually people don't are that bothered about you as you think they are and yes i think that comes into self-confidence a lot it's once you realize other people don't care about you you'll gain yeah. so much more yeah well, uh like you were just saying then about the on the spot where you're thinking back over it um yeah, little story i've got for you know you're just you're on your spot thinking yeah um and so this is from one of my friends. Not gonna, not gonna drop him in by name. Uh, you've met him before. We did an escape room. Um, someone that I used to work with. Hopefully that narrows it down enough for you to know who it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, when we was doing our tech support, one of the big things we used to do was read out like usernames or passwords. So knowing your phonetic alphabet really helped if you was trying to pronounce what letter it was. So he's there rattling through this thing and he gets to the letter g and he kind of paused and bearing this time i was like looking i was opposite him so i could see him there's someone else to the side of him looking at him we both kind of look up and look at him waiting you know to see what he's going to say now you know what you'd say if you got to a g wouldn't you but because he was so on the spot with this he's just like oh yeah g for gertrude (laughs) and you know when you're like hang on a minute did i just hear that correctly and we laughed and we always bring it up, always, always joking with him. But it's that little thing of that in the spot moment. He, he was probably fine with it because it was around us. We could laugh about it. But if you're in that wrong sort of place, obviously coming out with Gertrude probably isn't going to be the thing. But that equivalent to whatever industry, whatever role, whatever question and answer it is, if you come up with something like that, that might be something that sticks with you quite a bit, depending on who it is you're around. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's the thing as well. Like, I think the people who are the best, and I don't think it's about having like self-confidence. I think it's about not, 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 not caring, but not worrying about what other people think. That's the difference. You don't have to be confident in what you're doing, but if you can not worry about what other people think about you, you will be fine in the situation. And I think that's a slight nuance there in terms of, I might not be, the best person at IT but if someone asks me for some help as long as I don't worry about what they think about me I'll, I'll do all right in that situation but if you yeah. suddenly start worrying about what other people think about you and how they might judge you 
you know, you, su- you suddenly lose that self-confidence or whatever it might be. So in terms of like, like how your self-confidence has developed, because it says about like how we've changed over time on the, on the long list. Have you noticed the difference and over time? And what do you think like some of the key moments have maybe been with helping you build self-confidence over the, over time? Um, oh God, yeah, it's, I mean, a hundred percent, a hundred percent has it changed over time. If we was going just from like office business based stuff, obviously with my first type of job role, just that whole getting behind the phone, and actually having to ring people, answering the phone and just going with it from there, just that kind of been dropped into the situation. Um, then in later years, more the confidence of when you when someone gives you that extra responsibility and you actually can follow through with it yes knowing knowing that i think is great when someone believes in you and then you can actually deliver to that expectation and i mean you might think it yourself but even if you do think it yourself and you still think that it's still a good feeling and it is like a little confidence boost of all right i i, I know now that i definitely can do this sort of thing yeah um I think that's so, one of the things like failure. I think failures are needed throughout your yes. career in order to learn, but a success helps you build the confidence side of things. And I, I've said, I think previously on the podcast about how when I first started as a freelancer, I thought very much about a certain people in my head about what were they thinking about me. Uh, you know, like I wouldn't say my self confidence was low, but it wasn't where it is today. Yes. And I thought about what they were thinking about me. Um, there was a point during my freelance journey where I've had uh, feedback from them and it was actually really positive. So I was like, oh, great. So I then didn't worry about what they were thinking about me. There was other people I did potentially, but I think now I'm in a point where if I put out some content on social or in whatever form, like this podcast, mm-hmm. I no longer think, what will that person think about me in terms of negativity? I think about maybe a potential client and think, what will they think about me in potential positivity? You know, Mm -hmm. so instead of thinking about the the people who might feel negative towards me, I think about the people who might feel positive towards me or it could have a positive effect. And I don't find myself as much thinking about the negative response because actually I don't know anyone who would negatively respond to things that I'm doing. Like, What kind of per- if they are that kind of person, I'd probably don't want to be with them anyway. Yeah. So uh, it, it's quite interesting. I think, like you say, key moments are when you've had that success and you get that confirmation that you're, you're doing the right yeah. thing. Like, for example, th- you have been off for however many months on furlough or whatever. You come back and they say we want to take you up to a new a new role. Like, you don't know, go much better in terms of affirmation yeah. for that. Yeah. No, not at all. Yeah, it's that definitely a nice confidence boost, that. And I think as well... Um, but yeah, I, I don't... Go on. I was going to say, I definitely second what you were saying then, where you take out the, the thought of the negative response. Um, mm. That I think, I think that's probably been my biggest thing this year, of just taking that away. <laughs> yes. um, you're still there. You still have it in the back of your mind, but... As soon as you can push through that and do it, I, yeah, I feel I feel so much better yeah. from that. Um, and it's just, it's it's not easy. It's really not easy, um, especially when sometimes that negative response in your mind is actually yourself. Yes. Yeah. That that is uh, that is something like you might not think of straight away, but sometimes like when you're there going, oh well, if I post this, what about this? What about this? that's that's probably not anything anyone else is thinking about it's just your head that's thinking about it but kind of disguising it as something else it's hypothetical situations that you're creating in yeah. order to it, it's you you're trying to protect yourself but you're trying to protect mm-hmm. yourself from something that hasn't or may not happen and i think for me like it says about on the long list about finding who you are in terms of self-confidence and um being yourself so like how do you find who you are and I think actually the journey I've been on is especially since being a freelancer like being on my own working on my own kind of thing 
has made me find who I am professionally because you're at school, you're at sixth form, you're at university in my case, or, you know, in a workplace, especially through education, you're with a, a bunch of like very similar people, no matter how different you think you are, you're all on the same path. You've all got the same um, timetable. You've all, you know, this kind of thing Like you're doing the same thing. You've It's very hard to find what your niche is or what it is you're interested in or how you like to work it's very much prescriptive this is how you learn this is how you do it. but to actually be in a space now where i think i've probably gone a step too far in terms of freelancing <laughs> but it's all down to me it's not like i work the way i work i do it the way i do it you know you're in a space now where you're away from um peers as such that we've grown up with you know like you we interact with them in different ways but you're there with people who are, you know, maybe coming towards the end of their career, some people younger who are literally just starting, people who have been in the game 20, 30 years, like that whole different kind of perspectives on things and yeah. allows you, I think, to find who you are by breaking away from everyone who's been brought the same up the oh, same way. Too right, yeah. Um, it's fine. I think as well as, as you do get older and you can branch out that little bit more it's when you do find people that have them same interests in you as you like that really flourishes like one one like one great mate i have now just like we we became very close because of very similar interests but since then finding that person i am now even more invested in their interests and i probably know more about it than like things that I thought I was a huge fan of for 10, 15 years. It's like, I now probably know more about it than I ever have, which you can argue you probably will over time. But I feel like without yeah. that, without that person, without that connection there, the the level of interest would have stayed the same instead of peaking. Yeah. And I think which, as well, like you've got things like this, like what we do, we've, we've done this because we've almost like, I think you go back, what? five to eight years or whatever we, this wouldn't have happened because no. there's too many other things going on around us or whatever and too many other comparisons to be made but when you're in a space where there are no comparisons to be had like is anyone else doing a podcast i don't know but we'll do one you know i was doing the podcast yeah. do you want to join me on this journey and then we've kind of done this and said well why don't we do this on the side we've tried a few different things along the way that we probably wouldn't have tried if we hadn't have had that self-confidence to go ahead and to, and do, do it. it. <laughs> yeah. And like you say, yeah. like, I think you enjoy, we said about work-life balance before and um, I've spoken about personal branding on here. If you can find who you are and what you actually enjoy and be yourself as much of the time as possible, your work-life balance becomes less of an issue because you're enjoying what you're doing day in, day out and the way you find yeah. that is through personal branding and through being yourself and i think it, it can only be a positive thing uh, to yeah to to find these things but I, I don't i don't know if you'd be able to answer this i'm going to ask the question and then i'll fill for a bit so you've got time to uh, think about it yeah. but in terms of how how you actually find who who you are so like how do you find out what that is i know we've said about breaking away from a kind of structured approach in terms of like the education system but if like you were sat there now and you think there's more to delve into i've got a couple of ideas about how to do this but it's probably linked heavily to personal branding so i don't want to go down that path too much straight away but how do you think you could find who you are or kind of be yourself more within a professional environment let's say within a professional environment I just literally um, filled for like ages having asked you the question and then thrown a curveball right in at the end. Curveball, but I was going to say, I, I, I had a full <laughs> thing lined up there, but yeah, if we're going to go down a professional environment, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it has, it just has, it has to come down to that confidence of being willing to try something new. Yeah. Um, like I've, I think I spoke about this on the last podcast, like, that thing where I was talking about potentially looking to go down the now project management route instead of continuing with my accounts. Like I've, I've tried accounts and I've enjoyed accounts. I, I know that I'm good at it from like the whole numbers side of it, that 
analytical thinking of it. But if I don't try now to maybe branch out into something else while I have the opportunity, like I know I now have my accounts to fall back onto, but it's pushing pushing to that potential project management side of things and doing that yeah. will work potentially it's going to push me into dealing with slightly different people it's going to put me hopefully onto a few projects where i'm dealing with different people externally it's going to i'm going to have different day to days sort of thing yeah. and within within that i think i'll try and pull slightly from what i was going to use in my previous one it's when you get into your positions where you are speaking to people and they either talk about what they're enjoying or you're now in a position where you've found what you're enjoying, you have then your related things that fall from that. Yeah. Um, moving slightly away from the business side, I think the little bit I was going to talk about was I, in my previous job, when I first turned up there, one of the first questions I got asked was, am I into gaming? Is that like a hobby I have? At the time, I'd slowly moved away from that. So I was like, yeah, but I only really play on my phone. Like that was kind of yeah. how it was. Then it's, I got talking to people. It was like, oh, we play these games or we watch these YouTubers sort of things. And when I then branched into trying them things, some of them things I still play now, I still watch them same YouTubers. But from being part of that now, now, now new community, I've then found other things from that that I've enjoyed that have spread spread all yeah. sorts of way from that like the, just so just from having that one conversation to finding someone new on youtube seeing what games they like from that seeing them play it to then forming to oh they now create the show watching that show on that show they then talk about a new podcast they've got so i then listen to a podcast to where on the podcast they then advertise something that i look into and now i like sort of thing like that whole branching thing is just coming from getting yourself into a position where you're then talking to other people and get there, get what other people enjoy. Yeah, definitely. And just linking back onto something you you kind of touched upon there. And mm -hmm. obviously this, this just proves that we do genuinely randomize this topic because <laughs> we've not prepped in any way. For nope. this, if you haven't, if you haven't <laughs> no. noticed already, um, <laughs> but um, the bit you say about like um, you're moving into project management, um, although you're doing accounting at the moment, like moving into that project management, I I always found it really hard, and I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but when you leave education and that kind of structured life, um, there's no cut-off date for the next big decision. You've literally gone through school from probably primary school, you don't really realise what's going on, you just go through whatever's happening, and then you're seven, eight, nine and then you make your GCSE decisions, and then you know that in two years' time you'll be making a decision about six form or apprenticeships and then you know that at the end of your apprenticeship you'll be making a decision about a career or at the end of six form you'll be making a decision about university or apprenticeships or a career and then you go into university like i did you know you've got another three years and then in three years you'll be making another decision about and you've you've forced into progression you've got to do something at those points you cannot keep doing year 10 and year 10 and year 10 and year 10 and year 10 you have to move on and that's the thing i think in terms of like finding yourself is like taking them sideward steps and trying to move into that area like you are like you're in account so you it's good it's it's all right you know it's you know it's going in the right direction but actually there's this opportunity to do this thing that you might be interested in so let's take that step and if it if it comes off it, it becomes you know you find yourself even more in it if you just stick to the same thing and don't actually branch out whether that's in spare time or work time you're not gonna find who you are because you're not you until you've tried and you're never going to try everything but until you've tried multiple yeah. things you can't know that the thing you're doing is what you really truly want to do and yeah. which kind of links into another point which i don't want to take away from what we discussed about work-life balance but most people who work like a nine to five or whatever it is. And I appreciate there is family life and all of the pressures and stuff. But if you can find like an hour a week to try something in your, your personal time, you can maybe, it goes back to the stuff we did about personal branding. So go back and have a listen to that episode. Um, if you want to hear more about that. Um, but if you can find what it is that you're passionate about, 
and then bring that into the workplace, it then helps you build a personal brand, which will then help, which will then excel you, I believe, further than if you'd done them as two different silos, um, doing your personal life and work life. If you can bring them two together in one space, you'll get that extra 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent that boosts you further along the career path or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. But I, that understanding is really tough. And I think the best way, the way I've found who I was, especially in a professional environment, was finding marketing. And I found marketing by being on a course at uni, which allowed me to do four or five different areas in my first year. So I did um, organisational behaviour, which is essentially management, mm -hmm. um, marketing, accounting and HR. And I did the HR one and was like, not for me. Yep. The accounting thought, not for me. Did organisational behaviour and thought, it's all right, it, you know, it, it was quite interesting and did marketing and thought, wow, this is it. This is what I want to do, yeah. you know. And if I had, if I had originally gone on a management course, um, that's what I was signed up to. So I would have just done the organisational behaviour, which I kind of knew I liked, but I didn't realise that there was this part of it, this marketing bit that I loved. And it was the only way it was separated out that I went, actually, that's the bit that I want to do. That's the one you want to do. Yeah, so you, you obviously know yourself enough to know that, you know, if you're in accounting, but you want to be a, a construction worker, you know that you're you're a way off where you want to be. But yeah. when you're within your realm and you kind of enjoy what it is, try and explore them other areas, you know, and see right. what you find. That that's what it is. It's the try. It's the trying, trying to explore. The kind of saying yes to what sort of stuff comes your way, even like even just going out, um, just even going out on a whim with it and the whole not staying the same. I know you kind of said that, touched upon that, the not staying the same level. If like, if I went back four years now, let's say, if I went back four years and had stayed at my same job, I would be in a position where that company now no longer exists and has been absorbed by another company and I'd just be doing general day-to-day -day IT yeah. for that company. I made a few different decisions then by ever saying yes to things or by getting myself out there to try something new. In that time, I've been to America twice and worked there. I've got this new job where I've studied business accounting and potentially project management in a completely different relationship. And I'm also on this podcast, which has been trending in different countries and a brand new YouTube channel. Like all of that has come from saying yes to things or pushing out of that same day-to-day -day routine. Definitely. And I think that's that's one of the key takeaways of like how how to if you don't think you've found who you are and you don't think you are being yourself, is trying to find them environments where you can be yourself. Um yeah. and I think once you find them areas, a byproduct of that will be self-confidence because you will be more confident in what you're doing. You will enjoy it more and, and yeah. therefore you will um, excel more. And just, I'd mentioned a couple of episodes, so I've just quickly looked them up. Um, you want to go back and listen to the kind of ones that link to this, which is how to manage work-life balance. That was episode 29. And then the personal brand in shaping your personal brand was episode 26. So they're both linked very nicely into this episode Um and this topic that we've been discussing today. Um, I think this is a harder one to maybe nail down some top tips like we've done in some previous episodes. It's very much trial and error um, testing. But I think hopefully at us discussing, I think quite openly, our um, thoughts on being ourselves, self-confidence has hopefully inspired other people to try and discover who they are as well. I'm not saying we're gurus and that we've found our who we are completely and we're some no. Buddhist monks <laughs> sat in some, you know, yoga retreat. But I definitely feel a lot more confident in myself where I am at the moment. I feel I've a lot happier with what I'm doing in terms of career wise. Um, I've got an idea of where I want to be as well. That's not, you know, I'm, there's definitely room for improvement, but yeah, that, I think it, it's been quite an interesting conversation. Yeah, I think so. I think this is definitely one of the ones, if we're not giving the 
tips here, but especially if we were to look back over some of the stuff that we've said, um, if people want it, let us know. I'm sure we could come up with some form of little list of maybe a few activities just to try. Some things we've tried before that have given us that bit of confidence, what we've tried for self-confidence, things we potentially want to try in the future sort of thing. We could, I'm sure it can distribute that over Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that. Yeah, definitely. And as we say each week, if you've got any thoughts on what we've been discussing, then please um, do let us know. We do love to hear from you guys. So, but yeah, I think that's a good place to wrap up today's yeah. topic. So to round out today's episode, I just wanted to run through a few admin boring bits, but the stuff that keeps the podcast ticking over, thanks to you guys, we are seeing continued growth each week with the pod, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, new listeners coming on board all the time. So if you're one of them, this is your first episode. Thank you for listening. If you've been here since episode one, fantastic, brilliant, love it. I would just say if you can follow me over at the MJ Social, that's where I document like my journey day to day. Um, I share all other social media stuff, latest news, loads of cool little bits like that. And then for the podcast, if you haven't already, please do subscribe, rate, review, whatever it is you can do on the platform you're listening. It really does help us reach more people and kind of just reaffirms what we're doing. Um, you know, at the moment, me and Tom are sat in separate rooms. You know, other of a zoom and you know we do sometimes wonder is anyone listening and then we look at the figures and they are which is great but if you're enjoying it doing these things really does just show that and helps us grow the pod even more and what one really small thing that we would ask is if you've listened to this pod and you've enjoyed it please just pass the link on to somebody else who you think will listen that's probably going to be more powerful than subscribing or rating if you can think of one person who like you is maybe into business um, maybe freelancing maybe apprenticeships whatever it is maybe they're early in their career we would really appreciate it if you could pass this on to them finally just from me um we obviously do the long list each week randomize a topic and um, we are keeping it filled ever so slightly but we would love to have your input on that we would love to hear what you want us to talk about now that could be in the form of a question or a topic so if you've got anything you want us to talk about answer questions or specific topics please do send them over to me at the mj social on my facebook twitter or instagram and we will definitely try and cover them in some way whether it's at the beginning at the end or in the middle as a full topic um, yeah, we really do just want more stuff from you guys, really. I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to add there, Tom? Yeah, just that um, ongoing feedback. If, if it's feedback, if it's input from people, it's even, I mean, we're quite far into it now. We have the structure of the podcast, but let us know if that's working for you. Let, um, if there's little things like, I know we have this as a video now, if you are joining us on YouTube, if you're not, then you can jump on over. Um, but it's little things like, when we're talking about things, do you do you want to see more of what we're actually talking about? If an, if that's in a video, or do you want us to be sharing more links about little things that we are talking about? Um, so yeah, so you can see on it, all the MJ socials what's happening. You can kind of see them little bits as like more of a visual if you are just listening as the podcast. Um, that would be great. And yeah, as Matt was saying, just any little things if you want us to talk about um it is big, literally big or small like any small things we can cover in this part any big things we have that whole topic um as much as this is me and matt talking through things like as much input as we can get the better like it's just going to make things just awesome and one little thing that i did want to touch on as well matt since i've just been mentioning in youtube you said earlier in the pod that you had a new video up on youtube was that the Gymshark one you were talking about? Yes, yeah, so I've got um, one up about Gymshark, um, which was the news that came out probably a couple of weeks ago now that um, Gymshark's a $1.45 billion company um, started by a guy called Ben Francis, who's a really young British entrepreneur. Um, and the story, like some really good stuff on his YouTube about the story and everything like that. And it's, it's fantastic. I just kind of, been watching and following them and stuff like that and i just tried to pull five reasons why i think they've they've um, been able to reach such a high valuation and not from a, a technical business point of view like you know looking at their balance sheet but just how they've gone from him creating t-shirts in his room 
to that kind of valuation, how they've been able to do that. Yeah, and, yeah just kind of ran through that. And that's the kind of thing I'm hoping to do on my um, channel is just all different business related topics. Um, more specific, we cover quite general topics on here, like self-confidence or being yourself like that. It's quite a, a wide topic. I want to probably yes. do like 10, 15 minutes on a smaller topic, maybe a specific business, or I'm planning to do one about sports cards and why I'm investing in them and, you know, just a bit more light hearted kind of stuff. But yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, that kind of individual part of it more just been, as you were saying, we go on like a broader um, spectrum, but with just like the more deep diving into things, you've actually started doing the pod, but on your own without me. Yeah, so I did. I, for everyone who's listening, I did warn Tom about this before I went off and did it. Um, and I, I really love what we're doing. Um, and I've been thinking about like, um, I've got my newsletter and stuff like that. And I just thought there's something else missing. Um, I really want to document what I, what I'm up to and how thing how I do things and how things have happened along my journey um, and we've been launching the YouTube it sits really nicely on there like talking about these topics in a bit more detail a lot more personal and I was just thinking while I'm producing it for the YouTube I might as well take that content yeah. and put it out on the podcast as well so if you are listening to them in between episodes um, where it's just me on my own um, please be aware that is YouTube first content so that is made for YouTube it's not and I'm just kind of putting it on the podcast as extra value for you guys. Um, so, but if you want to get the full effect, then please do head over to YouTube. But yeah, it's just hopefully each week I'll be able to talk a bit more specifically about my journey and what I've discovered. And obviously we're documenting our journeys at the beginning each week. Um, but there's a lot of my journey that's happened before we started doing that. And I just wanted to kind of chat through some of them and maybe go into some of the stories a bit more and a bit more technical stuff about how it all works um, so yeah if you enjoy them again let us know if you're like no nah, i don't like you popping up on my podcast subscription feed every week bugger off i just want to hear you and tom chat about a randomized business topic every fortnight that's fine let me know i you know i don't want to be putting stuff out that people don't want to listen to so yeah, yeah just any feedback would be great on that and if there's anything in them and you're like oh for whatever reason we kind of like what Tom says um, and there's something in there that Matt talks about himself and you want to hear my take on it just let him know we'll bring it up in this one yeah definitely and if there's anything that we skim over in at the beginning of these episodes as well and you're like I don't know second Matt you said you were starting a YouTube how does that work you know like I can try and go into that a bit more detail or we can maybe even bring it in as a main topic on this if it's something me and Tom have both done together um, but yeah it's just a, a different avenue content slightly different just trialing it. I think I'm going to do it for a couple of months just to see how it goes. Also, it, it takes up more of my time, so I'm just going to see if it all works out. And if it does, it'll stay. And if it doesn't, it'll disappear and never be mentioned again. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, I think that's uh, gone. Gone. I was going to say one final, one final bit on that. We touched on it right at the end of last episode, but the channel that me and Matt have been doing on YouTube is now fully changed over with a new look, new name. Tom and Matt take on, go and have a look on there after you've looked at Matt's channel. I was going to say, you can't just let me have my moment on my own, yeah, can you? After, just... after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we're doing some, again, that's even more like, it's a business channel, but we're doing all kinds of stuff on there, aren't we? And it's even the business stuff we're doing is a lot more lighthearted than this kind of stuff like, it's just competitions and like our really stupid takes on things. And yeah, hopefully it's, it's a bit more entertaining than informative, that kind of yes. stuff. So um, yeah, it's just doing well there. It's doing well. So doing if, well. if you are somebody who consumes all of our content, the My Journey podcast, my YouTube and the Matt and Tom, sorry, Tom and Matt um, take on YouTube account, then please let us know because I think we might have to get like a super fan badge made or something like that for them people who yes. are across all three platforms. Oh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, so if you can comment yeah, on, like, if you can leave a review on this podcast, comment on my YouTube channel and comment on the Tom and Matt take on YouTube channel, I'll, I'll, we'll think of something. 
I think of something. And if you throw a retweet in on something on the MGS social on Twitter, then you'll get something even bigger. Uh, well, Tom's promising, so uh, don't miss out on that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, once again, thank you to everyone who has listened. And if you do go on to follow us, subscribe, whatever it is, an even bigger thank you. It really does uh, mean a lot to us. But until next time, thank you for listening.